One of the reasons why sometimes we may feel deep anxiety when we have to set a boundary is because growing up we had a parent who would punish us or shame us for expressing a feeling that they did not like. And this could have been a parent or any authority figure growing up. And because of that, we learn to believe that expressing that emotion is bad, is wrong, um, and it's not safe. When in reality, expressing our negative emotion is actually us expressing our needs. But that's why today we may struggle with fear of conflict, because we are just so afraid of being punished again and shamed again, even if the other person is invading our personal space or disrespecting us in some way. And that fear of conflict is actually a trauma response for those who grew up in an environment where problems were never solved and we were just often blamed for the conflict. And that's why usually we were the scapegoats of our family or the problem child. Remember that sometimes people have to see you as a problem so they don't have to change. And this is not to blame anyone because it is sad when someone is not ready to take personal responsibility and heal. And that's why I always like to look at my own healing journey as the best gift that I ever received. Because when we heal, we get to feel this worthy, amazing feeling at all times, regardless of our conditions. And there is truly no replacement for knowing our own worth. But when we come from dysfunction, that means that we were never properly mirrored. And that's why we start looking outside of ourselves. We start looking for that external validation so we can internally validate. You know, it's never your fault if today you fear that you are not enough because we learn to judge our worth by how worthy our parents treated us. But it's still our responsibility to look at whatever patterns of behavior we may have. I always say that what happened to us is not our fault, but it is our responsibility to heal. We have to understand the wounding that we could be masking with these behaviors, because when that happens, that means that there's still a wounded part of us that never felt loved or accepted. Um, and that still thinks, well, there's something wrong with me that never got me the love I needed. And when we feel this way in childhood, we usually become adults who overdo because we still don't believe that just being who we are is enough to get our needs met. And because we are always attracting from our wounds, that means that the more we get triggered with something, the more that shows how there is something unresolved within us. That's why sometimes we lose control of ourselves and we overreact because this is not coming from a conscious place. This is coming from a wound that needs to be healed. Whatever situation that is triggering you, that is just bringing that pain back to the surface so that it can finally own what you feel and make it okay by relating to the issue in a different way. And this is what I always do with my clients when we are healing their triggers. We have to go to that triggering scenario and then we go back to the first time that happened over and over again until we dissolve the original wounds because we have to change what you were taught to believe about yourself. That's why healing takes a lot of our energy. I remember that for so long, the only thing I did was to cry and sleep. I would feel so exhausted after grieving so much and releasing so much. And I remember that I wouldn't even leave the house because my eyes looked like they were stung by bees. I couldn't even open them. And that's why healing is hard, because we have to choose to sit with our pain instead of abandoning ourselves for short-term solutions. It really requires a lot of power and a lot of courage. And even when it's not perfect, it's still worth celebrating.